I replaced the Dubro foam with this thinner foam because the Dubro foam was just cut poorly and looked bad on the honey badger. But this is really kind of hard. Um, the dampening did meet the minimum requirements of dampening between frame and uh, honey badger, but I'm switching to this drummer's gel. It's uh, quite a bit more flexible. I hope it will take more vibration out and we will see after I fly it if it's actually going to work. You can see how much more flexible it is. Used on drums to muffle sounds. I'm not a drummer, but it seemed like a good choice. There it is, put back together. I also moved the GPS up onto a mast and moved it back away from the um, top of the APM. And we'll see how that works. I will have to do a compass motor compensation test to make sure there's no interference from the ESCs. Mode changed to alt hold. Mode changed to stay alive. Noticed when I came out of altitude hold, it went up just ever so slowly. So I'm going to readjust that mid throttle parameter. Mode change to loiter. Mode changed to alt hold. Mode changed to stay alive. Now I'm looking for a nice even hover so that I can later go back and look at the IMU data to try to set that mid throttle position a little better. Also, this will be for looking at the vibration data being um, moved Warning. between the Battery frame at 9 .8 and the autopilot. Just playing with it now, really. Mode changed to alt hold.
morning. Battery at 9.90 volt, 55%. Warning, battery at 9.88 volt, 49%. Warning, battery at 9.8 for volt, 44%. Mode changed to stay alive. Warning. Battery at 9.78 volt. 38%. Warning, battery at 9.80 volt, 32%. Warning, battery at 9.73 volt, 26%. Mode change to land. Warning. Battery at 9.70 volt. 20%. Good test flight. Long range telemetry now worked on both ends. I used it on the computer end. Uh, I now have data for vibration. I have data for mid throttle. Uh, I'm ready to fine tune a little more. Compass worked well. GPS worked well for loiter mode. Overall, really, really pleased with that test flight. <coughs> when I switched from an altitude hold where the barometer was being used, the platform went up ever so slightly, you may have noticed. So I'm going to go in and change the mid-throttle value from 625 to 620. And then I'll look at it again next flight. Uh, the main thing is, is you just don't want it to have an 800 there. And when you go from altitude hold or loiter into stabilize, it just goes zooming away, scares you, gets you out of whack. Now let's go in and look at our vibration, see what our uh, drummer's gel did. So we'll go into IMU and look at the X of the accelerometer. Remember it needed to be within the plus or minus 3 and look last time it was on the 3 which would be way down here. That harder gel. This time it is two-thirds 
better. It was right on the three at the top, right on the three at the bottom. Now it's on the one or less, and even the spikes are inside the plus three and minus three. So I'm going to leave it that way. Let's look at the X, I mean the Y. The Y is even tighter. It's inside 1 when 3 way up here and down here would be within tolerance. Let's look at Z. Z is minus 5 which is up here. So minus 15 which is down here. One little spike in the area. But this is remarkably better. We'll overlay all three. This is remarkably better than the previous data. Uh, let's see. Two. Yeah, this isn't the same scale. This is um, 66 and two thirds percent more dampened than before. I will keep that. That's just, I'm not going to change that. I'm going to also start using this stuff on camera dampening, probably. Let's go in and look at our throttle out. We changed it from 60. Uh, 625 to 620. I see some 615s there. 616s. Uh, that's a 640. This is probably when I play was playing with it. This was that little jump up in the air I did, and just before that I was hovering. So looks like 615, 616. Uh, so I set it at 620. If I wanted to get really, really precise, I could probably try 615. And when I left any kind of barometer hold, which would be alt altitude hold, loiter, almost everything uses a barometer to hold your altitude. Auto mode uses it. Um, drift mode does not use it. Uh, almost uh, a lot of the 15 modes do use it but the thing here is if you come out of one of those modes into stabilized which you must hit stabilized hey, there's 615 all over the place right there I may go with 615 I'll know after I play with it again on another flight I know I've got my vibration damaging, dampening done I'll do a compass motor compensation next and then I'm pretty much ready to do nothing but vibration dampen the camera if I even go with much on this little sports car type thing. But the whole thing is, is any time you get in trouble, you're flying along in any mode except for stabilized, you have your barometer doing something you go into loiter mode, auto mode, uh, learning mode, all sorts of modes. You have your GPS affecting the platform. Although you saw me in loiter mode nudging the platform around, you can do that. I have that set to do that. That's another perimeter. You can tell it, no, I don't want to be able to nudge it around in loiter mode. I do. I want to be able to nudge it up and down. What the deal is there, though, is for emergencies, you better flip that switch into stabilized mode because if you lose a barometer or a GPS or a compass acting properly, they start acting improperly. It will make the platform go zooming off in some direction. Suddenly, you're just frightened. You don't know what's going on. It's still moving at 40 miles an hour while your brain is in brain lock. Your first instinct needs to become hit stabilized mode. 
stabilize your altitude, stabilize your platform, and then bring it back, land it, then come in and look at telemetry data to see what went wrong, what made it go crazy, fix that, and then fly again another day. So that's why we set this mid-throttle perimeter. Now, while it's in altitude hold, loiter mode, if you push the throttle up, it will nudge the platform up. If you push the plat uh, throttle below 50%, it will nudge the platform down. Now, if you are in altitude hold and you move the throttle up to three quarters and the platform slowly drifts up, don't expect that. When you go into stabilize mode, you nudge it up to three quarters, it's liable to zoom up because this perimeter is for making sure that it doesn't go wild if something goes wrong. So when you first come out of stabilized mode at 50% throttle, and it's a mark on the RC transmitter that I keep it at, you want the platform basically to hover you don't want it zooming up, you don't want it zooming down. When you come out of that, those modes into stabilized mode, very little changes in throttle is going to make very big changes in altitude. Whereas, while you're in altitude hold or loiter, this perimeter is going to affect the fact that if you move that throttle radically it's not going to let the platform move radically but again what we're setting up here at 615 I set it to 620 is if you look at your transmitter and you see that your throttle is at 50 percent you can be assured if you pull it from a mode where it is in altitude hold, the GPS is holding it or some such, and those things fail. As long as you're at 50% throttle, you can be pretty much assured it's basically going to try to hover. Now later, you can drop that throttle down 33%, go back to 50%, and 50% outside of a controlled mode may not be hover. So this is just a perimeter for that emergency situation. The mid throttle setting is what you want. See it's actually I'm setting the mid throttle at 615 percent going zero to a thousand percent on the throttle. I'm setting it at 615 is where it hovers because uh, the platform with the tr um, video transmitter and the uh, camera on it now is a little heavier than it was. It was hovering close to, really close to uh, 500 which is 50 percent. But now I've got that got my vibration out of my frame to the point where I've never had anyone, any platform so far. I'll go back and change the other ones soon. Flame wheel and the X650. I got my platform where my autopilot is extremely vibration dampened from my frame vibrations. And I have my mid throttle setting the way I want it. Uh, like I say, I may drop it just a little bit more. You notice it didn't go zooming up when I came out. It's really in a good, pretty good place as it is. Y you don't need to be really, really precise on this. You just need to be accurate. And plus or minus 5 is probably accurate. So I I'm going to leave it at 620 probably and go on to other things. All right. So... Hope you enjoyed those little tuning tips.